Hello and welcome to this uh, first on the channel. I'm going to do a little bit of a lineup builder ahead of game week 290. Uh, it's a big game week. A lot of the leagues are open, which means a lot of messing about needs to be done. I've got my laptop in front of me, but I've also got my my screen that I'm going to share. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's not too boring, mostly. But um, I'm going to get straight into So Red Data, where I've begun building um, just my one team for now. And we're going to see where we get, because I'm trying to figure out whether or not I go for loads of leagues, or if I just concentrate on doing a few of them as, as strongly as possible. Uh, so let's get into it. As you can see, my first team that I wanted to concentrate on this week was my U23 Super Rev. Mostly because I've got a unique, I've got two U23 uniques that I can choose from. Uh, one of those being Dylan Levitt, who's at Dundee United. Uh, the other one, Lee Bomb, is playing at Saul. But he's got a slightly uh, more difficult matchup this weekend. Don't have the third, so I can't enter um, the unique division. But always good to make good use of those. Um, another point that I wanted to point out was the scores down here. As you can see, the so rare data has kind of um, given us a, an estimate on what the average player scores in those positions um, against the opposition they're playing. So as you can see here, I've got some nice green scores there, which um, just kind of indicates to me that these players have got good matches. Um, they should score well in their positions. And they also all score pretty above average in general for like the positions they play in. So... I'm excited about this lineup because you know it's still a part of the season where not a lot of the strongest players aren't necessarily entering their sides into this division as well because a lot of people like to moan about the rewards not being quite as good and I agree they're not quite as good as um, the pro divisions are um, you know some of those star rares that you don't get in um, division 2 or super rare division as it's now called for all the new school heads I'm still an oldie at heart but um, yeah, I'm quite happy with this team. I do think that it is hard for me to put out a stronger side than this in any division. I mean, this one probably would do all right even in the All-Star um, Division 2. But as someone who likes to target the U23s just for that longevity, a bit of extra value there, um, I'm going to keep playing this. Another reason, because Gaitan Cook is my only... U23 super goalkeeper that I can kind of rely on this season so I've got one good season to try and push hopefully maybe trade up to another U23 super air goalkeeper that I can make some good use of so yeah apart from that I'm, an, I'm a little bit more I've got some sort of rough edits which I'll get into um, there you go if you are interested so rare.com forward slash r forward slash stish um, go use that you'll get a free card as will I um, as you can see, um, I don't smash mine out. So I've, I've got um, 14 completed referrals so far. Um, another 16 and I'll get another unique. So fingers crossed if that happens, it'll be another U23. And I might squeeze a few entries into uh, Division 1. Um, let's get into the main page. You can see what I've kind of like done here. Sometimes I like to go in and do like my drafts. As much as the So Red Data website is better for that, I have kind of put some rough teams together which I've kind of deleted a few of them as well but um, just to sort of have a little look at where we're at um, underdog limited side I feel that's pretty strong um, for, for an underdog side so I'm probably going to leave that as is as I'm going to do with the specialist limited in terms of limited these are the two divisions that I like to play more than most so first thing before I even go into my limiteds I'll go in see what players I've got that have um, qualified for that underdog so under 50 average over the last 15 and, and for specialists you need at least two players that have an under 40 average so if I've got a couple of players that look decent there then I'll normally like go pretty hard in the entries there so in this in this week if I look at this I'm not mistaken it's um, Santini and Vanzier. Vanzier is a pretty decent scorer when he hits good form so I thought this was a good opportunity to get into the specialist limited um, all-star there again Furch came in off the bench in the last game he's been out injured so I'm not expecting big things from him also Hong Jong Ho possibly out um, injured so this is a bit of a risky play 
Um, Galizade, he came off the bench in the last game to score. So I'm hoping he can do um, more of that this weekend. Limited Asia is kind of a nothing team, to be honest. A, a few good players here and a few sort of like just chucked together. It's almost like a, a glorified training team, this. I'm not expecting it to do anything, but... Um, you know, if, if you've got five players that are playing, why not enter them rather than just chuck them in training? I'm not going to use them in any of the other limited divisions. So, um, as you can see here, here's where I'm at my under 23 pro. At the moment, this is pretty strong. Um, as you can see, if you look at my lineup builder, I've, I've made a change already. Um, on Sore Day, I've got Yusuf in there. Um, I've obviously since gone in, and this is where I'm at at the moment. The main reason for this is I think. You know, the U23 Pro has has a slightly better sort of reward pool than the U23. Um, and I look looking at what I had available, um, Gubon Chol is a decent scorer as well. But I think that like if I want to hit the decent rewards in Pro, I need my big hitters. And for me at the moment, um, Al Hassan Yusuf is a player that I've got high hopes for this year. If you have a little look at um, him. He put up a 70, um, and a lot of that's all-around score. In the last game, 34.7 all-around, which is massive. Um, so rare are actually bringing in a tweak on the scoring matrix as well, which I think um, I haven't had a look on so rare data yet, but we might be able to do that in just a sec. I think that this is going to benefit defensive midfielders quite a bit. Yusuf is exactly that. He's a proper box-to-box, -box, wins a lot of tackles, a lot of interceptions. But he also puts in a lot for final third passes. He's a proper box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, he was a reward I won, actually, towards the end of last season. Um, and I had a little look at his scores, and I was quite I was quite optimistic about what Yusa might get out of him for this season. He started very strongly last weekend. So, as you can see here, he wins a lot, a lot of interceptions there. Five last game. Possession won nine. Nine duels won. Um, he actually lost a few of those jewels towards the end of the game. At one point, he was up about about six jewels, um, finished four up in the end, but still a good score. Successful final third passes nine, attempted assists. You know, he's he's exactly the kind of player that I like to have in the midfield. Um, and Antwerp, I think, are going to be a bit better this season. They made some good signings. They got some. Uh, they got some money behind them this season, so who knows what is going to happen there. But if Yusuf can hold that holding midfielder position, I think he's going to do big things this season. So going back into there, just wanted to explain again about that. That was obviously different to where I'd gone with my initial lineup. But I think... Let me just get into this. Okay, I'm still getting used to these uh, menus. I think I'm going to keep that as is because I think that's pretty strong. Joel Perot has been on fire in pre-season. He's banged six goals for Swansea in pre-season. And yeah, I picked him up in the closed season. Pretty excited to get um, some use out of him. Luka Sukic, when he hits top form, can hit the big big scores, 90s, 100s. So I'm hoping for big things from him this season. Um, they've got a slightly tougher fixture this weekend against Gr Sturm Graz. But... I think that will play into um, Sukic's favour. Hopefully, he hits the starting lineup because they're pretty stacked in midfield this season. But um, they are carrying a few injuries at the moment, so I'm expecting him to start. Um, as you can see, Gubon Chol, I decided to put in instead of Yusuf, um, purely because I think Yusuf is a slightly stronger pick. And looking at what was available in the prize pool, I decided in the end to lean a bit more towards the pro because Kose Tani's got quite a good fixture as well. Um, but this, I believe, is... Uh, I think Ferreira is probably my strongest forward option this weekend. Got his super rare there. Got him captained. Um, expecting Levitt to have a great season. Now that he's made that permanent move to Tony Watts, Dundee United. Tony, if you're having a look. Let's see where else we got to. All-star super rare. So this is where things get a bit interesting. This is what I, what I need to tweak. Um, I'm not sure if I need to just sacrifice the all-star super rare team to spread these sort of super rares among some of my pro sides. For me, I think that the all-star rare side I've got there, you know, is just, look that looks like it's just trying to scrape ETH, which to be honest with you, is what I'm trying to do. Challenger Europe Pro, I decided to 
go a bit heavier in here than the U23 rare. Mostly because a lot of my good midfield and defender options are out injured at the minute, which means that the options I do have tend to be in the super rare category, so I need to go into pro with them. Problem is Felix Strauss has question marks over him. Um, he had, he didn't he didn't play last weekend. Apparently it's something overhanging flu symptoms from previous illness, so not too serious, but he's definitely risky in there. Christian Naboa is also a bit of a risk in the sense that he puts up enormous scores, but he has not started the last two games. So I'm hoping that's not a fitness situation. Hopefully he gets a start on the weekend. He's got a pretty good fixture. Uh, Conan Jocelyn is someone, shout out Bumcrack on So Rare, um, a good friend of mine. He put me onto this guy pre-season, watched him against Ajax, and said he was causing all kinds of havoc. He was available on the market pretty cheap, so I picked up a super and a rare. Um, I've had some pretty good tips from Bumcrack in the past. Shout out Bumcrack. Um, and yeah, he came off the bench to score a goal and put up an all around of 10 um, in sort of 15, 20 minutes he played last weekend. He's got a tough fixture this weekend against Bruges, but I do fancy him to start and um, He's fast, you know, he gets, he wins a lot of dribbles, so I'm just hoping that he can be uh, a nuisance. So I think that that's an okay team. It's just a bit of a risk, isn't it? Like, if I wanted to play that a bit safer, I think I would probably swap out Victor Moses into this team. Um, so probably go with Murich, Deviv, Naboa, Jocelyn, and swap out Victor Moses for Strauss and just switch them over because I just think that Victor Moses has started um, you know, two, def two decisives in the first two games so expecting him to start this weekend um, he's got a good fixture as well um, against Orenberg who recently uh, promoted into the Russian Premier League another thing with this super rare team here is Koita um, he had a really good game last weekend but again he is rotation fodder at um, Sintrudens so I'm hoping he did enough last weekend. There's a lot of really good write-ups on him. Watched a couple of clips of what he was getting up to playing in that wide position. Um, Colidio's had a great start to the season. Um, very rarely plays a full 90, but he does often start. So I think that this is a reasonably safe pick. Um, whether or not it is going to do bits, I don't know. But the um, the prizes in the Super Air All-Star Division are pretty good. So I'm quite... I'm, I'm on the fence about whether or not I make this a bit stronger or a bit safer by swapping out Moses and Strauss because I think Strauss is the weak link here I do think Jocelyn might start um, Murich obviously um, debut against Huddersfield I do expect him to start still because I think he is their strongest option um, a lot of people will wonder why I'm playing him in the challenger and not U23 and that's mostly down to the fact that a lot of my good U23 midfielders and defenders are actually Eredivisie um, which doesn't start until next weekend, I believe. So, Murich will probably be used in U23 next weekend. Um, but in a minute, we'll get into some of those lineup builders and you'll see where I'm at and you'll understand a bit more as to like why I haven't entered strongly into U23, which is down here. At the moment, this is what U23 looks like for me Safanov, Raul Gustavo, Edwin Cirillo, which for me is a very weak pick. Um, I'm a little bit light on rare mids at the moment for this weekend. Uh, Jocelyn again, so again, like, you know, if he doesn't play, I'm wiping out two teams there, which is slightly, it's more than a slight risk, if we're being honest. It's not really something I like to do, um, unless it's a player that you absolutely nail on to that starting 11. Girotti is another one, um, he blows hot and cold, and... Yeah, this is a this is a bit of a punty team. It's not anything that I'm expecting to do well. It's one of them ones that you chuck it in a bit like a training team. You know, Cirillo's probably not going to start. Gustavo was bench last game. Girotti hasn't been on top form. Jocelyn may not start. Um, Safanov's the only like clear starter really in in that lineup. Um, so it is a bit of a punt. I'm not expecting much from that. Limited Challenger Europe. This is a good team. I quite like quite liking this one. I think Philip Cohn is still a little bit of a rotation risk. Uh, Nico Mental played a full 90 against Liverpool um, in a friendly in the week um, in between their first fixture. Although Cohn did play 
and start the first game of the season for Salzburg in goal. So you'd expect him to keep his position. Um, he kept a clean sheet, of course. So it'd be a bit unusual if they did drop him. Um, but Mantle you know, could come in at any point in the season. So um, Rodrigal started really well at um, Zenit. He's moved to Zenit. I did buy Rodrigal and Naboa as like a mini uh, Sochi stack, which has now been split up. So we're not stacking here. Um, Shan Kelles, who plays in Austria, um, I think he plays at uh, Austria Vienne, um, and he started the last game. He was a he was a pretty decent pickup last season for U23. Um, again, not too sure if he's going to do much this weekend. Potential to not start as well, but um, then Tarek Tisadali's pretty safe option. And I think you know what if can. If Shan Kalez can start, pick up a decisive, this team, I think, could do bits. Also hoping that Naboa starts as well. Um, specialist rare. I think this is a pretty decent side, to be honest. Um, Paul Scamp and Santini. I mean, I could actually go a bit heavier on this division as well. This is another one where, looking at some of the weaker options, I could strengthen here if I wanted to, because a lot of the players in here... There's more than three players that fit the the under L40 here. I think Paul Scamp, Acevedo and saint all have that under 40 average. So I could even like beef one of these selections up. Um, even Bale, I think, is under 50. So there isn't actually an over 60 average in there. So if I really wanted to like bolster things there, I could maybe look at this and maybe chop in this All-Star Pro team up a bit because... I think Fernando or Brenner in this team would strengthen it straight away. And I do think that even uh, Ljubic is a rotation hazard. And if you're going to enter All-Star Pro, I think you have to be pretty sure that you're putting a beastie lineup in. Everyone wants to win this division. It's definitely one of the best um, prize pools on the platform this weekend, in my opinion. And for me, this is a weak side. But mostly down to the fact that this guy right here, Ivan Ljubic. So that's really where I'm at at the minute. I I need to chop and change a bit. And I think that what I might do is let's delete the All-Star Pro team for now. And let's let's just try and look at strengthening maybe the All-Star Pro lineup. I think maybe let's change Maybe let's switch that out. Challenger, you are a pro. My thinking behind this is we don't have the Eredivisie um, this weekend. So I do, do I have an advantage against people who have heavy Eredivisie? Um, you know, like the big players. Like you, I'm not playing against any Ajax stacks. I'm not playing against any Feyenoord, any PSVs. There's lots of good teams in the Eredivisie that I can avoid this weekend. So I'm wondering if like this is a good opportunity to compete in Challenger Europe Pro. Um, doesn't look like there's too many people entered at the moment either, which I like. Um, let's have a little look at the prize pool. Challenger Europe Pro. Prize pool. A lot of starts. 13 star res up for grab there. Let's have a look who's in that pool. I mean, look at those. That is a that is a that is a beastly pool. Who's in the tier one? I mean, tier one's got some good players in it. Sangare, Starfelt, Furuhashi, Wrench is a player that has been on my hit list for a while. I wouldn't mind winning one of him. Um, Careguard is another I really like. Woba. Yeah, I mean that uh, maybe that looks like a good that looks like a good pull. Maybe we go a bit heavier then. Let's be I'm gonna amend this and we're gonna swap out Felix Strauss for Victor Moses. I just feel like he might be a bit of a safer bet. Um Christian Naboa is risky, but if he plays, look at those scores, like you know, he's an almost 70 average player. Conan Jocelyn. Oh, 
there is that risk he doesn't start, but he came on and changed the game very quickly. Um, Chukovin potentially starts this weekend as well, who knows? And if he does, he probably scores. He does pretty well in like minute goals to minutes ratio. Um, oh, there's that part of me that just can't let, <laughs> that can't use another rare here. But Fernando surely is the sensible option, isn't he? Because as much as we can get sucked into super rare versus rare, if I if Jocelyn doesn't start, Fernando's going to outscore him because Fernando definitely starts for me. Um, oh, look at that! I mean, 87 last game, nine percent bonus. Oh, do we do it? I'm quite. I'm quite, quite tempted to go there. Let's leave it like that for now. And just make the change before we forget what we were doing in the first place. If we go into the drafts. Let's just amend this. Put Strauss in there. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do that. Strauss is another defender, isn't he? Uh, maybe put Lubitsch in there. Then it completely nerfs the team though, doesn't it? Gorner's injured still. Luka Oyen is injured. That's a gutter, that one. El Hadj is probably not going to get a look in again this season. Matsuoka, bench fodder. Osmar's still injured. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to my midfield situation at the moment. And now you look at that and you think, I need to have a look at that. Prize pool, don't I? Really? Let's have a look. That—that's what it is, isn't it? You—you—you are aiming for that star super rare, because that star super rare is enormous. Look at that. I mean, a lot of these players are like that good that they're hard to buy. I've got a Kenneth Taylor though, but you know, you take most of them, wouldn't you? Um. Let's have a look at the tier one pool. Hmm, not bad. Not bad. But then when you get to the sort of tier two, tier three, you almost you'd better off with a rare, really. And my own gallery is getting a little bit overrun with supers because I've done quite well in division two, where people aren't maybe playing it as much. Um, so then. I have to ask myself, do I want to win a card or do I want to compete for big cards? I mean, it's not the strongest lineup either, is it? It's. Oh. Lubic did get an assist in the friendly this week, so he probably starts, but he's not going to do much against Red Bull Salzburg, is he? Do we leave? Do we leave Victor Moses in that team? Let me have a. I need to look back again and have a quick look at that pool. Challenger Europe Pro. I think that's a strong team. Top thirteen get a star rare. Is a, that is a beastie pool, isn't it? I think I've got to leave that. But now... Who can we take? Let's have a little look. We might be able to shift around a bit. I mean, we could use a rare. Could use a rare. But like I said, I'm extremely limited at the moment with... What I've got available to me without... Taking away from U23D2, which I think is a strong... I don't really want to take anyone out of that side. I don't want to take anyone out of my U23 D3. So that does leave me with Lubitsch, who has a really bad matchup. You know, a lot of low scoring, injured, gutted about that one. Rubchinski is an interesting one, but he has, again, a horrendous matchup with CSKA. Um, 
but he probably starts. I'd say he's more likely to start than than Lubic is. Matsuoka, if he starts, is a great pick, but he hardly ever starts this season. Obed Vargas is um, questionable. He doesn't put up the biggest scores. Gabriel Florentine um, is actually on his way to move to Russia. But they still haven't confirmed it. But he hasn't played for Argentinos for a while, so he's definitely no use. As you can see, look at all these low scores. Look at that. Lukas Hukic. That's got to be like the lowest L5 he's ever had. Um, so I think I'm torn here. My... My options, really. Oh, do we go Lubic it? Lubic it? Sturmgrass weren't too bad last season. Maybe I have a little look at their... Let's have a little look at their history. Maybe I have a little look at back at how they got on in um, their fixtures against Red Bull Salzburg. Doom Graz versus Red Bull Souls Bird. Let's check the matchup. So apologies for what the uh Screen again. So, where's the head to head? More than 2.5 goals. Both teams scoring. A lot of cards. A lot of corners. Red Bull Salzburg first to score. Sturm Graz without a clean sheet. So, He's going to lose points for conceding. I mean, we kind of expect that anyway. Team streaks, no losses. Unbeaten in 10, though. Oh, maybe we go with Lubic, then. Let's have a look at him. Let's see. This is another thing I like to do. See if he is selected usually against Salzburg. So go on so rare data, have a look at his SO5 scores. Um, you know, like 42 on average a midfielder will score against Salzburg. Look at I mean his scores are not good are they? A lot of sub appearances. Let's see if he usually plays against Salzburg though. I mean he's a DMP there, he wasn't he was injured then. Um comes on as a sub there. I'm not liking this. I'm not liking what I'm seeing at all. I can't put him into that team. I think it's... Let's have a look at Rubchinski. SO5 scores. I mean, S CSKA 51. Um, his scores are not that representative of where he's at because he was at Locomotive um, and he wasn't getting any game time. So he only played his first game for Nizhny. Um, he obviously couldn't play against Lokomotiv because he's on loan. But he played as a, an attacking midfielder in the last game. But he didn't do a lot, did he? I mean, they did get beat 3-0. What were we expecting him to do? But on his day, he is capable of putting up big scores as you can see he just didn't often get the opportunity to do so um, I mean if we can get a decisive out of him great I mean he played left back there oh, centre attack in mid though he's only played there once apparently um, but do you know what maybe we just chuck him in there for now he might be the best option we got. 
for now. Unless we look to strengthen from elsewhere. Um, who do we captain here? Probably Collidio. He's he's in good form at the minute. It is a that's a that's a it's not a great it's not a great entry that in my opinion. But I do think that Challenge Europe Pro is probably where we want to be at. Um, this rare under 23 team could be broken up in and like used to strengthen elsewhere I think that's not winning anything um, does it strengthen this team I think it potentially does let's have a look so we need to have those averages um, only one with a 60 or above only two from the same team we need at least two with a 40 or below so Paul Scamp ticks that box, as does Santini. Gutierrez is just outside it, it's got a pretty horrendous match. Um, Azevedo hits it as well, do you know what I mean? Like, Gareth Bell is just above it. But if we keep Paul Scamp and Santini in, we can definitely bolster this with the use of Fernando and Brenner and suddenly that team is looking a lot better um, let's have a look who else we've got here potential use in instead of Gutierrez we might have a better option here and we could go a bit heavier then um, Shuto Abe I would say is almost certainly a better option maybe we use Abe there and suddenly, that is looking pretty strong. Um, Paul Scamp should play this weekend because Tim Melia has came out of the last game with a thigh strain. Paul Scamp's been playing quite well. His scores won't show that because they got absolutely battered. But he's been pulling off some pretty big saves. Um, this is a slightly easier fixture for him. I don't expect him to keep a clean sheet still, though. So... Um, strengthening goal I guess and use Azevedo instead of Abe we could use Azevedo who hits that 40 and then we could strengthen in goal We've got Alfredo Talavera to Luca um, Akoy has been it's been said uh, by the Watford manager that he's likely to be the number two this season, which is gutting. I was so sure he was going to be a really handy goalkeeper. Um, Marsman, I think, will start this weekend, um, but then putting him in goal in the same team that I want Brenner to score in doesn't make much sense. So, do we use Safanov? Do Aral score against Krasnodar? This weekend, probably. But he probably has a better opportunity of a clean sheet than Paul Scamp. Oh, I don't know, man. Paul Scamp's due a clean sheet. He started... Last... Maybe we should leave it like that. Let's leave it like that. For now. I like that. That looks better. Um, specialist rare... You know, we know we can get some serious prizes in that. Let's have a look at the pool. Oh, that said though, maybe not. I didn't realise there were no stars in there this week. A tier two rare. I mean, there is nothing in there that is getting me excited. Let's have a look at the supers, at the top end of the pile. No, isn't. I mean, no. Let's let's edit that back to what it was. That must have been why they did it in the first place. Um, we can maybe leave Abe in there. Um, who do we put in? Gutierrez or Azevedo? Oh, 
Do we fancy Gutierrez at home? Azevedo got a decisive last weekend though. Let's go like that. That's strong enough, isn't it? Punty. Nothing to get excited about in that prize pool though. Um, it does mean we can strengthen here. I wonder if we can... It's just that midfield, isn't it? But Gutierrez is definitely a better option there. So that strengthens that. Raul Gustavo... Um, I'm not sure why he didn't play the last game but we can definitely put Fernando in there captain him Brenner there and now look at that that looks beastly that looks pretty decent to me um, who else we've got games Silyanov is a he, he's due a big score 10% bonus there um, he will definitely play. I'm looking forward to when the tweet comes in. He is like a fullback, he likes to get forwards. So I think he's one of those players that will definitely benefit from the new um, pro, pro, uh, yeah, the new scoring tweaks that are coming up. I think he will benefit from that. Um, maybe we leave that. Raul Gustavo, I probably just need to do a quick Twitter search on just to check that he isn't like injured or something like that. So let me just quickly do that. Um, Raul Gustavo. Let's, let's have a look. See if so, if so rare Twitter's got any uh, any gems for me. Let's have a look. So a lot. There's a lot of talk about him. Let's see if I can quickly. Translate a few. That's not us. Let's have a look. We got yeah. There's a lot of people moaning about him on Twitter. He didn't play the last game, and I wonder if they is right. I'm not seeing a lot on there. It's hard to decipher what's going on there at the moment so do I go with Silianov instead of Gustavo when Gustavo plays he scores really well as you can see <coughs> oh do we go with Silianov Rostov versus Kimki Let's have a look at silly enough. Um, Kimki forty eight plays as plays as a centre back against them last time. Scored okay. That could have been like a sixty plus if he kept a clean sheet. Um, they don't often keep clean sheets, do they? Let's have a look at a quick find. Fifty-one and ninety-six. I mean, it's a great record against Kim Ki. Maybe we chuck him in. 10% bonus as well. That's nothing to be scoffed at, is it? Yeah, midfield options are lacking. That Luka, Su Luka Oyen uh, injury's done me. But that looks good. Let's go with that. I feel like that's a safe, safe bet because I'm not too sure what's going on with Gustavo at the moment. But maybe we use Gustavo in All-Star. That's a nice team. So we've got a strong team in Challenge Europe Pro. An okay team in Super Air All Star. Strong under 23 rare. Um, a, a competitive specialist rare. Um, a strong U23 Pro. A strong U23 Super. I'm quite happy with that. So now let's get back into our drafts and see where we're at. All Star rare. 
All Star Red, great goalkeeper situation there this week. Uh, Marcelo, Marcelo Silva there, midfielder again. I'm going. I'm lacking on the midfielders, aren't I? Darwin Seren. Let's go L15s on these and have a look. Yeah, look at that. I'm just. I'm so light on midfield this week. Um. I don't fancy Cirillo to start. Maybe Seren starts. Um, Cho Young works on good form, but he has been travelling with the international B team and they returned today. So he might not feature in that game on the weekend. In which case, um, we know Cecinia is injured. Jakimakis is always... Whenever I pick him, he don't play. He's just like bad news brown in my lineups um Girotti Dorjales didn't play last weekend so I'm probably going to leave him out until I start seeing him start Conan Jocelyn again do we want him to risk to wiping out two lineups Carlinhos Jr. has not been too bad of late maybe we give him a go Because I do have some America options as well. I've got another American goalkeeper, so we might even be able to squeeze a little punty America side out. So maybe we leave the Americans alone. Maybe we get... Oh, part of me just wants to leave Cho Young Wook in. They've got so many injuries at Seoul. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. That's not bad, is it? Let's go and have a look at what our US option is, if any. Now, I'm pretty sure have potential underdog super rare maybe or specialist let's have a look at their specialist super rare situation so we've got Acevedo there it's got a tough fixture oh of course we deleted all these teams didn't we with these players in them let's have a quick look I've just seen that Let's have a look at my All-Star Pro. Maybe we go All-Star Pro. All-Star Pro, what options we got? Iwan Army is a beast of an option. It's going to be the midfield that lets us down again, isn't it? Oh. This is... This is a problem. So I think with that in mind, I might be better off going into the into like the super rare specialist if I can field a team. So I need one with elf. I mean we could do this. Reese Williams. Blackpool. That's an got an L15 of under 40 straight away and Lubitsch maybe this is Lubitsch's time this is where I need so rare Japan's help but then Matsuoka's just been like classically left on the bench all season he's playing against his old team on the weekend you'd think that if they were going to give him a game it'd be here but He's such a big risk. Um, but I think if Lubic starts, he'll score more. So we can put anyone in here now. What have we got? Is Ferdy Droyf back? Is he back? If Ferdy Droyf is back, then that could be a shout because he's a great striker but I think he's still injured let's have a little search Ferdy Droy for news um, tools recent past week no nothing let's have a look on Twitter search his name
Where are we? July the 21st. Expected to join training the end of July. I'm not seeing anything just yet. So he's too risky, I think. Let's, uh... Let's get him. There's my little so rare news feed. Not seeing anything here. Uh, Quinton Timber to Feyenoord. I think that one's been on the cards for a while, hasn't it? Right, where were we? So we're trying to figure out who to put up front. Do we go with Chukovin? Do you think it's time he gets a start? He hasn't started the last two games. But, good matchup. Um, even if he comes in off the bench, could nick a goal. I fancy him more than anyone else that's not been used just yet. And that gives us a chance to put Iwanami in and Acevedo. Looks all right. It looks all right to me in a tournament that doesn't have many entrants. Like if you wanted to go all in on it. But no, I'm not going all in on that. I think that's a not decent little entry. So there's another team we've entered. So we uh, still have. Do we have an underdog rare potentially? You only need four players for that. Um, all star, we've got an all star. All star pro, we don't have. It's the midfielder's gonna let us down. Is it even worth entering with a really shit midfielder? I'm not sure. Got into not enter that though. I think, let's just be honest. America Pro, what are the options? I've used all my good ones, haven't I? Maybe bolster the all star. Let's have a look at what we've got there. No, that's alright. Leave that as is. That should get me the ETH. Um, maybe then. We do an underdog rare. Now, the way underdog works now, you, you only need four cards, but you do have to put a team of five in. So we are going to lump in a common goalkeeper who has no fixture because they're going to lose all the points anyway. It doesn't matter if they play or not. Um, underdog rare, I only want to see rare because they take all your points away for any players you fill the team with that are rare. So let's go there. Um, I think this is going to be Edwin Sorry, He's got the best chance of potentially starting. Forward. Let's go Girotti. An extra is probably going to be Jocelyn there again. Or Yambola maybe. Didn't play last week though. Let's let's go with Jocelyn. Ooh, captain. Let's go with Raul Gustavo. Purely. Oh, no, let's not. Let's go in. Why not? Federico, do us proud, boy. There. So that's another team. Underdog super rare. I don't think I've got enough now. We can just put him in goal. Felix Strauss, Anwar El Hajj, Patrick, and this is this is the bench warmers at XI. This one, um, Patrick, and come on, we've got one more, surely. I only want to see my super rares. I don't want to lose a hundred points from anyone. Um, 
Gorn is not going to play. Thomas, Ka maybe it's going to be Matsuoka then. Or Obed Vargas, maybe. Old Mott Wigan, maybe. Who are they playing? Um, maybe Wigan. Let's have a look. Maybe I'll give him a little quick search. See what he's up to. He hasn't played much lately. Expecting big things. Maybe we just check. What about Obed Vargas? This is a search. Because I know he's like days away from return. He's out. He's out. He's still not back. So. I want to put in. Matsuoka and just hope hope he gets a run out hope he gets a start um, let's captain Felix Strauss because he is the most likely to start so how many teams is that? 16 I think that is about it to be honest with you legend I bought a legend Zidane who doesn't even seem to be eligible for the Legends Challenge, believe it or not. Um, I can put him in there, but he doesn't have a game. I don't know how he scores. Um, any number of limited, any number of rare. At least one. I mean, let's just bang. I don't know if this is going to work. But I'm just going to bang a team in uh, made up of people who may or may not play um, Nakayama could play who else can we put in there Jakamakis on the off chance he nicks a goal um, Paul McGinn's out some of his averages. Um, Cabanillas may be out, I was reading. Uh, where are we? Eduardo doesn't often sit on the bench two games in a row, so maybe we go with him. Legends challenge. We're in the mix. First time I've ever entered uh, Legends. I don't think Zidane scores though, does he? So, not sure what to expect there. Um, do we have any available goalkeepers? Yuya Oki, not worth it. I think I've done all my training teams. Um, fill in the blanks and the drafts. There we go, we'll keep Nopper as the captain. Some people hate doing this, I don't mind it. It's like quite therapeutic. Thomas Castro is a player. Oh, I've got two of them in there, look. Um, not used, no game I need. Stick him in there. So. like to make sure that all of my there we go I want to make sure that Leon Bailey's in training he's had a pretty decent pre-season a couple of goals so hoping for better things from him next season all right gang I think that's about it um, there's not much else 
I wanted to go through. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, you know, what is what is there to enjoy? Me sat here chatting shit about footballers. Um, if you did enjoy the content, um, give me a like, subscribe, and I will post some more stuff up here soon. Good luck. Catch up with you in the hours. Big up.